Hi, I thought I might do a video on how to set up a student's folder when they're starting in the Playberry program. So it's a bit of a complicated process. The folder is really important because students bring it to and uh, from lessons and their cards stay in there. All of their work done in Playberry sessions stays inside the folder. Their homework goes home in there, comes back in there. So it's, it's, it's a big part of it because part of these youngsters becoming a bit more independent is them managing their folder them bringing it up the stairs to my room, them walking out with it, uh, them taking what they need out of it at the beginning of a lesson and setting it up on my table. So it's part of building independence in these youngsters. So that when they start with me, I ask them to bring their folder, but I've got one here uh, just to show where things go. But they choose their folder. Lever arches work best because a lot will go in there. Um, you need to teach, or I need to teach youngsters how to use a lever arch folder because if they're not respectful with, and gentle with that mechanism, things um, get bent and, and stop working pretty soon. So one of the things I teach kids how to do is to obviously use the lever to open it, close the lever. I also get my, I teach my kids how to turn their pages over by putting their hand under a stack of pages and gently lifting instead of pulling from the edges because um, they'll rip the holes. So, what goes in? Well, the trusty uh, pocket for their cards, for their reading, spelling, concept cards, and later on their awkward squad cards. Now kids, some of my kids have um, their own wonderful, um, probably more durable pouches to hold that stuff, but I find I'll start them off usually with one of these plastic ones, and what we've got to do is put a couple of holes in it to start with. So I'll just manage things here. So I hole punch into that so it can go into their folder. They also need a book to do their writing in. So depending on the age of the student and how well they're handwriting, I always go for dotted thirds, but I'll go for the 18 millimeter, uh, which looks like that for my younger kids or my older ones, um, uh, the 14 millimeter dotted thirds. Uh, like that, but uh, I will put holes in that as well. Now this student I'm starting today, I'll have to have a look at her handwriting, but either way, we put holes in that. I don't know which one she'll be going with, but you know, I'll do that for another student another day, I guess. So that's their handwriting book as well, which will go in. So let's have a look at what goes where. Now obviously there's no work in this folder yet. Oops, just get rid of that. But the folder divides into sections and I use uh, section dividers to arrange this. So I'll just grab those there. So the sections that make, let's get rid of this little duver. They're not very handy. The back section is for all the Playberry benchmarks that kids do. The benchmarks for people who have trained in TSD, they know the benchmarks, the little assessments that give us some diagnostic information on how well we're teaching them. They're also great for kids because they give them a real sense of success because kids never fail benchmarks. They always do very well. So the benchmarks are kept up the back and I like to keep the benchmarks in a plastic sheet instead of students losing them or them getting ripped out. That's one of the things I'll put inside a plastic sheet so their benchmarks just stack up nicely in there. Pop that on for this student. Oh, come on, there we go. So benchmarks, very last section of the Playberry folder. Then their homework section. So every piece of homework I send home, uh, it, whether they're reading sheets or exercise sheets, um, they will go into there at the beginning of the lesson. Or, yeah, at the start of the lesson, at the very beginning of the lesson, I'll check their previous homework and then pop their new homework in. And when they've completed their previous homework, they will get a sticker on this chart here. So this is the record sheet when they get 10 stickers for doing 10 homeworks in a row, they get a lucky dip out of the lucky dip box, which is actually not really truly a lucky dip because they can look in and grab what they want. That's a little trinket or a sweet treat. I know I'm breaking the rules terribly, aren't I? But anyway, oh, that hasn't got holes in it. Now you might notice that I've used duct tape, good old trusty duct tape on all of these um, other charts and sheets that are going to be in their folder because we need to reinforce, <coughs> excuse me, we need to reinforce those holes uh, for these sheets that are going to be moved a lot, used a lot. So that pops on there. And when I start students with me, I always like to give them uh, 
just a, a bonus sticker to get them going, even though they haven't done a first time work. Oop, let's get that off there. It's a bit difficult doing two things at once and holding a camera in one hand. And oh, if you come, oh, bear with me. Okay, so this student's first sticker is going on. Wow, James Bond. Right, first sticker is going on. Pop those away. So in a lesson, what they will do is, um, once I've checked their homework, I'll push the sticker sheet over and they will pop the sticker on. And when I get the 10, that's the lucky dip. When they complete a whole sheet, that's a double lucky dip and they get a new sheet. Okay, so that's just a nice way to help keep kids motivated. So that's the homework section of the folder. So I'll pop that section divider on. Okay, so we've got benchmarks, homework. Right, the next section, uh, is for anything they do in lessons with me. So this is what I call the worksheets. So any tu any um, any any tutor sheet work. Well, actually, that's not true. Tutor sheet works go in their writing book. But any 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 worksheets, uh, any intro sheets that they do with me, or anything else, uh, patterning, dividing, and coding sheets, etc., will go in that section. And their most recent work is always on top because. This diagnostic teaching bit, we're often um, referring back to some practice they've previously done just to show them something. Um, sometimes we'll have to go back and reteach something that's not quite stuck. So if we put the most recent worksheets or introduction sheets at the top from the Playberry program, then um, it's we don't have to go digging for it. We can say, look, you know this, you might have forgotten, but remember back when I taught you this and blah, 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 and we can have the sheet there at the top. Okay. Worksheet section. Now we get into the engine room of the folder. There are some very important charts that stay up the front of their folder that build as they work through the Playberry structure. These are the long vowel choices for spelling sheet. So as they learn their long, long spelling choices for vowels in the order of the Playberry structure, they go on there. Now that's a very, very important sheet because those multiple choices for spelling the long vowel sounds are one of the things that give our kids trouble. So if you have a look, it's a similar layout to, to that. In fact, it's the same layout, just a little bit differently proportioned, I guess. So that will build up as the structure goes on. Uh, oh, oh, we're constantly referring back to that. Um, just to remind youngsters that you know there are these, there are these positions that particular vowel spelling graphemes go in. So, that goes up the front. The other really important thing that kicks in when we teach them uh, suffix ing is this chart called the rules for adding suffixes chart. And a bit like the long vowel chart, that will build up. That'll end up looking like this over here with um, the different ending patterns of base words and the rules about what we do uh, when we're adding usually vowel suffixes to those different ending patterns. So I keep these, and by the way, there's my fully fully charged long vowel choices spelling. I keep these up around the room because kids need to know where they're headed and where they've been. So um, I'm always referring to these full charts to say, look, you've got you've got these already and you're heading here. And uh, yeah, so it's good for them to see it. None of this stuff is guesswork for our kids. They need to know where they've been and they need to know where they've headed. Okay, so in goes the rules for adding uh, suffixes chart. Oops. Guess what? No holes. Gee, these, these huge hole punches are handy. Bear with me. Okay, and we need to put some holes in the long vowel choices for spelling chart as well. In we go. Okay, so they go in. I put the at rules for adding suffixes chart behind the long vowel choices chart because we'll be getting to that. We'll be starting on that after. We start on this, this comes first when they do the uh, open syllable work and the long vowel sound work uh, at about, oh, teaching point, where do they do? Where do the, uh, here we go, the closed syllables and the open syllables come in at teaching point 9a. So they will start putting uh, long i, long a and long e on this chart when they start on open syllables. Okay, right now, also importantly, we have the Playberry structure. So students have this at the front of their folder and as they do a teaching point, um, they highlight the teaching point. Now, often we get behind with this uh, and they 
will say to me, Bill, we haven't highlighted this for a while. And I go, oh, you're right, we haven't, so they have to catch up. But that's the play very structure from, te pardon me, from teaching point one right up to teaching point 86. Now, very, 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 very rarely do I have a kid past the kind of the 70s because uh, usually they have normalised, um, they've caught up with their uh, reading by then and I graduate them. Or and for some kids, they just get too big and they move to high school and we realise that we just need to just to, um, free some time up for them and we've got them far enough and, um, yeah, they can they can get on with life and, and uh, we'll talk about assistive software. But we've got them a very long way either way. So, yes, that's the Playberry structure. That needs some holes in it. That tracks their progress. All kids look at this and they go, oh, how long does it take to get to teaching point 86? And I go, well, not all kids get there. You know, it's some, some kids are slower, some kids are faster. It depends on how often you do your cards at home. Right, kids who do their cards every night uh, move much faster through the structure because we um, are getting the repetition and the multiple repeated exposures of the grapheme phoneme correspondences that they need. So, kids, do your cards, you get through faster. So that goes there. Their student book goes up the front as well and their little pocket for holding their cards goes there. So that is how we set up a Playberry folder for a student, which becomes, well, I guess kind of their property. Like I said, I don't let their mums or their dads or their grandparents carry them up the stairs to me. They carry them in, they carry them out. It's their responsibility. So hope that's helped. Okay, have a nice day, folks.